All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you'll, if you'll find your seats, uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and get started with Selling More Without a Sales Staff with Nan Mossy from Potrats Advertising. She's got a great talk here for you, so uh, please have your seats and, and we'll get rolling. Um, at this time, I'd like to, to introduce Nan, Nan Mossy from Potrats Advertising. Nan, take it away. Good morning. Um, you'll probably notice that your program said that Paul Potratz would be speaking today. Some of you probably noticed that I'm not Paul. Um, Paul is uh, the COO of our company and on the weekends he likes to race motorcycles and things didn't go as planned on Saturday so he's home nursing a broken rib today. So I'm concerned for Paul but I thank you all very much for having me here in his place. Um, when I got the phone call I was getting on the plane to come here and was told that we had a title and that's all I was told. So I called him up and said, Paul, what are you talking about? Selling cars without a sales staff. And we discussed the fact that selling cars is different than it was 10, 20 years ago. It's different than it was five years ago. So much of the sales process happens online. It used to be that the sales staff was involved from the very beginning of the buying cycle. Um, people would stop by, pick up a brochure, get their information from the dealership. They don't any longer. But things have changed a lot very, very recently. Um, what we know is that we have all been told time and time again that we have to learn to sell to millennials. And we're kind of annoyed by that. Um, to us, a millennial is a 20-year-old. It's not our core audience. It's a bunch of kids on their iPhones doing things that they're going to outgrow eventually, and they'll come around to see it our way. But that's really not what's happening. Millennials started turning 36 years old this week, this year. So the front end of a millennial is 36 years old. 25% of them are married. They're starting families. They have kids. This is our core audience now. But they're not outgrowing their iPhones and their tablets. Um, you know, to kind of put it in perspective, and I'll date myself here a little bit, but it's for the greater good. When, as, when I was in high school, I listened to Aerosmith and Led Zeppelin, and my parents listened to Andy Williams and Tom Jones. So when I turned 35, I didn't start listening to Andy Williams and Tom Jones. I continued my discovery of music. I kept the stuff that I listened to, but I didn't go backward. And your car shoppers are not going backward either. They want the technology to do the job for them, they want to be in charge of the buying process, and they want to lead things their own way. They want their buying experience to be unique. What we discovered, my role with Potrats, we are a full service um, advertising agency just for automotive dealers. I'm vice president of digital marketing. And what was, has been frustrating to me for years is that I know how to reach the audience that we want, and I know how to communicate with them. But when we get them to the websites, websites are based on 10, 12 year old ideas. And so they can't handle what we need to do with our buyers. So what we did at Potrats was we developed a secondary company, web development company, and we developed a product called Dealer Lead Driver. It's a different kind of a website platform, and it takes into account all of these things that we know about our buyers and about the changes in the market. So we also know that what's really important with car customers is engaging with them as early as possible in the sales funnel. If you wait until we are bottom of funnel and you're just going to get those leads, get those leads, get those leads, we can do that. We can send you as many leads as you want, but if, unless you've engaged with them from the top of the sales funnel, you're going to be wasting a lot of time on leads that are not relevant and you're never going to close. If we can engage from the top of the sales funnel, funnel we're building loyalty, we're giving that car buying customer what they want from the very beginning and we're building that trust and your chance of closing that customer is about three times as great as someone that you engage very low in the, in the sales funnel. This is what dealer lead driver looks like. Um, doesn't visually doesn't look a lot different than typical websites, but there's a lot going on here. We rolled this out to um, the first client. We were 13 months in development of this website platform. We rolled it out to our first client um, in July, and what we saw 
we compared pre-dealer lead driver to post-dealer lead driver. We saw website sub form submissions go up 138%. We saw the average time on, spent on the website, once we got them there, go up 33%. We increased phone calls by 50%. And that's all really cool. But we increased car sales from before to after by 32%. Increased car sales by 32%. The only change we made was switching the website platform. And then we were able to take all of their digital marketing and adapt it to this much better performing website platform and together we increased sales 32%. A lot of testing went into this website. This is, you've all probably seen a heat map. <laughs> um, but we've done a lot of testing on this site. So we didn't just take a whole bunch of great ideas, throw them together, and roll out a new website platform. A lot of A-B testing, a lot of multivariant testing, um, making sure that these pieces worked exactly the way that we thought they were going to work, um, getting rid of things that, that didn't move us forward, and adding things as we saw, as we saw opportunity. So one of the most important things for a dealer in um, a new website platform is, is it going to be easy to use? And so we built in a lot of tools to make it as simple as possible for the dealer to use. So this is smart pricing. If you have um, a typical website platform and you want to go through and you want to mark down all the F-150s for a special sale this, this weekend, you have to get in there and mark down each F-150 individually. With smart pricing, you set your parameters and you can mark down your web price, your MSRP, whatever, whatever price representation you want. You can decrease by dollars, you can decrease by percentages, but the nice thing is you set your parameters so if what you really want to do is mark down all of your used inventory that's been on the lot for over 90 days, you set that parameter and you can mark it down in a couple of clicks. So it makes it really, really easy to manage your inventory and manage your pricing without spending a lot of time. We additionally have smart payment. So um, a lot of, uh, we get a lot of calls from dealers um, with their old website platform. These payments uh, that, you know, the web, the web developer just came up with some random uh, parameters for payment data, and it really doesn't reflect what's going on in our dealership. So we came up with smart payment. So again, you can get in there and set your APR, you can set your loan terms, so that the payment that you're showing on your pages are as realis realistic for your market as possible. And hot deals. So at the top of every web page, there's a little icon for the hot deals. Um, have an opportunity here to put in what you want your hot deal of the day to be, and that runs as a banner across the top of your pages. So it's very easy to use. It's very easy for your um, BDC manager to get in there or whoever is handling your, your pricing, your sales managers, to come in and, and customize the website to whatever you need it to do. Now that we've got the back end kind of in place, content is critical. And this is really where we started because we know that people want to find what they need quickly and easily. And if they don't find it on your website, they're going to go to some other website and may never come back. About 40% of people who don't find what they need the first time on the website don't come back. And so you want to make sure that everything that is necessary is on your website somehow. Um, so this is early in the buying cycle. Again, great SEO value. Uh, a lot of these pages are provided just um, out of the box on this website platform, but we can customize these to be just about anything that you want. FAQ pages, we have 17 different FAQ pages. So these are service pages. Uh, how do I change my, or um, why is my check engine light on? Is searched about a million times a month. So 
we want them coming to us to find out why their check engine light is on. They can go anywhere, but if they come to us, we're starting that relationship. We can also pick up, uh, they can pick up our retargeting code, and we know that they are in market for service, and we can start advertising to them that way. So we have 17 different FAQ conversion pages already set in the website, but then what we do is when we get them to that web page, we take them to the next logical step. So if someone has come to this page because their check engine light is on, they're thinking a lot of different things right now. They may be thinking, oh my word, what is this going to cost me? So we can have a 10% off service coupon. They may also be thinking, this is the third time this has happened to me this year, I gotta start looking around, I've got to get rid of this car. So we have opportunities to find out what your trade-in is worth, um, get pre-approved, whatever the next logical step is for that particular FAQ, we make sure that we have opportunity here to move the customer just a little further through the buying cycle. And a lot of the things that, that you'll see in this um, website platform has to do with that next logical step concept. We also have um, a lot of video on the website. People like to get their information from video more than reading now. Um, I tend to be on the older side of the demographic of car buying. I prefer to read. I'm in a minority. Uh, people want video. They want the information to be there and accessible. So this is a landing page that we set up to support a social media campaign. So we can run our social media with a little teaser video that says these are seven things that you can do to increase the trade-in value of your car and lead them back to this page. So in order to get the entire video, all we ask them for is an email address. That's it, just an email address. Because now we can get them into our CRM and start watching their behavior. And there's a lot of different technologies that will let you do that. Um, marketing automation and inbound marketing, once you know an individual and you can identify them, you can watch what they do on your website. So having things as simple as this, not only get the information that people want to them quickly and easily, but it also sets you up for future marketing to that individual. So there's a lot of opportunity for video on this website platform, um, and we make it very, very easy to, to create that. We also have reviews for each of the vehicles. Um, and because we know that people put a lot of stock in reviews, they're going to go out and look for reviews on the vehicle, look for reviews on your dealership. So we give them a chance to do this right here on the VDP. So when they're looking at a specific vehicle, they can roll down to the bottom of that page and they can see how many stars it's been given, what kinds of comments people have put in, and get a feel for what does everybody else think about this car. So it's almost like a little testimonial here. This is one of my favorite features of this website platform. People want to know how this vehicle is stacking up against another choice. So we give them the opportunity. At the bottom of every photo of a vehicle is a little button that says compare this vehicle. It's on the SRP, it's on the VDP. And so you can choose as many as you like. I chose three in this instance and they build up and then when you say, okay, let's compare them all, it builds this chart for you. So you can, your customer now can go in and find out what the difference is between these vehicles and are the differences of value to them at that price point. So this is one of the most popular features for the shopper on the website. And everything that we did in our research was to make sure that we were appealing to the customer rather than the dealer. Most websites are built to make the dealer happy. We needed to make sure that, yes, the dealer's happy, but we need to make sure that the customer is happy because that's what's going to sell the cars. So one of our most popular features is the vehicle comparison pages. And that's really nice on used cars especially, um, CPO and pre-owned, because there's, it's not like a new car. A new car is a commodity. If you're going to buy a 2016 Toyota Camry, it's pretty much the same at every dealership. And so now you're deciding where to buy it based on unique selling propositions and, and so forth. But used vehicles, there's a tremendous difference between 
this 2014 Camry and that 2014 Camry. So that vehicle comparison page is very, very useful on used vehicle sales. This is our build a model or a build a car feature. So you can see here so far, you look up at the top, I've got green check marks, I've chosen what my model is, I've chosen my trim, I've chosen my color. Now I'm coming in and I'm going to choose my accessories and build this car exactly the way I want it. So a couple of things can happen here. If you look up at the top, you can see in that little button it says featured used. So somebody's doing building a car, seeing what it costs to get exactly what they want, maybe that's outside their price range. Maybe a used vehicle that's very similar to what they just built is in their price range. So we give an option here to go and see what else is available. Take a look at our pre-owned inventory and see if maybe there isn't something there that will satisfy the need. So once they've built their car, they submit with their contact information and we're able to contact them and any time we ask for contact information, we always ask what medium they would like to use. Would you like a phone call? Would you like an email? Would you like to be texted? What is your favorite way to communicate? Um, we know that phone calls are answered about twice as often as emails and texts are answered about four times as often as phone calls. So if you're not texting with your customers with your car buyers, you're missing a huge opportunity. Texts are really, really convenient. If you're at work and you get a personal phone call, boss is in the room, you can't take it, push the phone aside and you ignore it until a convenient time to return that phone call. But returning a phone call is a commitment. You don't know how long you're going to be on the phone. You don't know how the conversation's going to go. It's not quick and easy and just get down to business. But texting is. So you get a text, you're at work. Maybe you can't answer it this second because the boss is in the room, but the minute, when you have a minute, you can quickly respond to that text and you're still keeping control of the conversation so people are far more likely to respond to a text than they are a phone call or an email. So give them the opportunity when you're asking what kind of, how they would like you to get back to them, make that an option. Make sure that you're using text with your customers. So now if they do continue, um, building this vehicle, they submit their information, you're able to get back to them and let them know, yeah, we can get this put together for you, that's going to be about eight weeks before delivery, whatever the situation is, and then really engage that customer and move that forward. This is our VDP. And I wanna spend a little bit of time here because there's a lot happening on this page. Somebody's looking at a vehicle and they wanna know more. So, over to the left here, you can see that we have um, live broadcast and we have a number of different options there. So does everybody know what Periscope is? Yeah, a couple of people. Periscope is live video broadcast on your iPhone. So you can, you can start recording something through Periscope Anybody who wants to can watch it, but if you've invited somebody specific to watch it, they'll be there, they can comment on it, um, and you can communicate back and forth that way. So if somebody's asked about a specific vehicle, you grab your iPhone, you run out to the parking lot, or your Android, you run out to the parking lot, and you start talking to them and showing them the car. So they've contacted you, I'm interested in this specific vehicle, does it have leather seats, does it have whatever, you can periscope them back, or meerkat, and show them exactly what it is they wanna see. So now you've started that relationship, you've got that opportunity to bring them in and continue that sales process, um, because the more face-to-face -face you can get with somebody, the better. Also on this page, you'll notice that up toward the top under new 2015 Ford F-150. It says great selection, 220 F-150s to choose from. So we're doing um, scarcity and abundance here. People love to have a huge selection. They love to know that there's more than one to look at. They're going to find the, exactly what they want if you have a huge selection. But if there's only two on the lot, 
then we, we don't just get rid of that or just have it say, great selection, two to choose from. In that situation, it switches over and it says, hurry, only two left on, um, at this price or only two left on our lot. So we're taking advantage of scarcity and abundance there. Tells you how many other people viewed this vehicle recently, so give a little more sense of urgency there. And then we've got a couple of different ways to connect. We've got get Brian's best offer. We find that if you put a face and an actual name there, people are much more likely to connect through that link. Um, we've got check availability, schedule an appointment. We've got pricing. Um, this is, happens to be a Canadian dealer. So 1611 is number of or liters per 100 kilometers. Um, so, but down at the very bottom also, in that little blue bar at the bottom, you'll see that it also tells us we have vehicles such as this in our pre-owned inventory. Are you interested in certified pre-owned of this vehicle? Because if somebody's looking at a vehicle and they can't afford it, you don't want them going off somewhere else to take a look to see if they can find a vehicle like it that they can afford. You want to keep them on your website and start delivering to them the information that it is that they want. And then again, we have those next logical steps just above that. We've got a payment calculator, uh, trade in appraisal, get me financed, and can I see the window sticker. Um, free trade appraisal is one of our biggest, biggest, biggest lead drivers we get more responses to that button than anything else. And so we do a lot of training with our uh, dealers on how to answer that inquiry. Because you really do have to see the car in order to give a, an appraisal. Um, but we get so many leads when, w through that button that if they're handled correctly, you do get those people on the lot and, and start that buying process. Landing pages are critical for any strategy. You have to make sure that if you're doing digital marketing or traditional marketing, you have the right page to send people to that are going to give them the information that they need. So this is um, one tactic that we use. People want to compare the Chevy to the Ford or the Toyota to the Honda. You don't want that on, on a drop down on your, on your website. If somebody's on your website looking at your manufacturer, you don't want to tell them that, yeah, there's, you know, this is a Ford website, but did you know that Chevy has one too? But you do want that information there. So what you do is you build these pages, but they're hidden pages. And the only actual link to get there is in your digital marketing plan. So if somebody is searching, I want to compare the F-150 to the 1500, we've got an ad out there that will pick up on those keywords and lead them directly to this page. So now we're giving them what they want. And now they're on our website and we can start communicating with them about how the Ford is so much better than the Chevy. Um, so this way you're not promoting the vehicle that they're comparing. You're just giving them the information that they want and bringing them into the fold. Also, video again. <laughs> landing pages with video convert so much better than landing pages without video. So if you have a sales event, you don't want to put your TV commercial here. You want to put a video here about your sales event talking personally to the individual who's come to your page. They know you're having a sales event, that's how they got here. Now you want to give them a little more information. So you don't want to roll out a commercial to them. It's just a waste of their time and, and they'll walk away from it. But give them more information, invite them in, get them walking through the door, um, but use as much video as possible. And so that's how our landing pages are set up, uh, making it a very, very easy process to get this live and on those pages. These are conversion pages that people can find either through your navigation on your website or through SEO searching, and they are structured for a very high conversion rate. So the one uh, with the forerunner is a hotspot page. When people roll over those hotspots, information comes up about that piece of the vehicle. So if they are rolling over the wheel well, it's going to give them information about clearance and um, 
the drivetrain and all of that type of thing. So as they're rolling over these different hotspots, more and more information comes up. And then at the bottom of that page, claim your $500 Forerunner gas card. They're interested in a Forerunner. Why would they not click that button? Why would they not click a button to get a $500 gas card on a Forerunner? So now you're collecting those leads, you're getting people in, you know what they're interested in, and you can respond to that interest. Also, conversion pages on uh, new vehicles. So bringing people in as they're starting high up in the funnel in that research stage. We want to be communicating with them at that point, retargeting them thereafter, and making sure that we're building a relationship by giving them every bit of information they could possibly want about that vehicle. Because if you don't give it to them, they're going to go somewhere else and may never come back. And gamification. Game, have anybody heard the term gamification? Yeah? Okay, this is working great for us. This ties in with the social media uh, plan. So gamification is games. We have um, the, our Cyber Monday is coming up later this month and it's spin to win and you spin the wheel and you can win whatever is on the wheel. We've got 20% off service, um, free wiper blades, things like that. And in order to claim the, the prize, people need to put in their name and their email address. So now we can start marketing to them. Um, it, we've got a lot of different games that we promote out to our uh, to our clients, we've got the um, shooting duck gallery, but it's little trucks. We've got things for March Madness basketball, that type of thing. So people really love this. You promote it through social media. It doesn't really um, connect any other way. We've tried a lot of testing with how to get people into these pages, and social media really is the way to do it, Facebook and Instagram. Um, they love playing the game. They share it with their friends, and that's a nice thing about, uh, about um, taking your social media and your website strategies and combining them. They share these games with their friends. Their friends come in, play the games as well, and win things. And so now you're building that database of leads to nurture. They've been to your website, you have their name and address, or their email address, and you can start including them in your email campaigns, your um, display campaigns online, that type of thing. So you're building that database. Smart fencing. Has anybody heard of geofencing? Yeah, a couple people? Okay, geofencing is one of the coolest things that's ever come across digital marketing. So the way this works is in the back end of the website, you've got a map, and you can draw a little circle around anything you want. You can draw a little circle around a major employer, and when someone comes to your website, they see a message. If you work for one of these companies, you want to see this info, but they only see this message if they are accessing your website from within that little circle that you drew. So you can access, you might not want to draw a little circle around the Phoenician and say, if you work at the Phoenician, we know it. <laughs> Come in, to, come in and claim your discounts. You don't want to creep people out, but if you pick like the top three major employers and say, we have special programs for these top major employers in our market, come in and see, you know, claim a discount or whatever it is. So that's one way to use it is to offer a discount. Another way to use it is same thing, draw a circle around um, major employment areas and say, did you know that our service department picks up and drops off vehicles on Thursdays in this specific neighborhood. So you can promote your service department with this. You can also conquest with this. So if you've got a com major competitor down the road, you can draw your circle around your competitor showroom and have a specific message for people who, because we all know they do it, we all see them in the showroom searching on their phones to see if they can find a better price somewhere. So why not? Give them an, them an offer. Draw a circle around your competitor. They're searching for a better price. When they hit your website, give them an offer. 
See if you can get them from the competitor showroom into your own. And this is working for us beautifully. Geofencing is simple to use and you can get so creative with it. You can either do a pop-up like this, or we also have it built into the website where the actual content on the page will change depending on where the visitor is coming from. Um, and yeah, this is just the form that we ask people to fill out when they uh, get to the website if they click on that coupon. Another piece that we have developed, and this is sort of a separate product that works with our website, but it can be installed on any website. This is a phenomenal low cost lead generator. And this can be used, we do not only retail sites, um, we do retail, we do pre-owned, we do um, credit and finance, uh, we even do RV sites. So, so some very closely related things. This can be used on any of those sites. So it's called Exit Gadget. And the way it works is this. Someone comes to your website and they visit a certain number of pages of a particular type so that we really determine that yes, they are in market to buy a vehicle. This doesn't just trigger on anybody who comes to the site, but, but people who are in market. So they've looked at three VDPs, they've spent eight minutes on the site and now they go to leave and they break that plane with their cursor and the coupon comes up. So this offer can be anything that you want it to be. So in this case, it's you qualify for a down payment assistance voucher of $500. Yes, I want my $500 voucher, or no, I'd rather pay full price. They always click yes. <laughs> so when they click yes, we don't ask for a lot of information. We don't need a lot of information. Anytime you have a form, make it as small as you possibly can because people will abandon forms that have more than four fields. So if you can keep it down to four fields, you have a much better chance of collecting information and you can get the rest of that information later. So here, we're asking them for some minimal information, but then we ask them to qualify themselves. I am just browsing, I'm ready to buy, I'm looking for help with financing, and people answer this honestly. We rolled this out um, to two of our biggest clients last year. And each of them sold two cars within the first week just from Exit Gadget. We have a dealer in Texas whose Exit Gadget for mobile brings in more leads than any other vehicle he's using to bring in leads. Uh, it works great on mobile, it works great on desktop, and you can change the message as often as you like. We've done a lot of testing on these messages, seeing what colors work best, what offers work best. Um, some of these are animated. So we've tested them, um, but every market's a little bit different. So if we roll out the, the message that we think is going to work the best in your market, and maybe that's not exactly your buyer, very easy to swap these out and make them different. We do them in multiple languages. Um, so if you have, uh, we have them in French and Spanish right now. So that's available as well. The, this is how they are performing, and they're performing very well. So we have the good, the great, and the greatest. The greatest that we have right now is converting at 4%. So 4% of anybody who sees the exit gadget actually fills it out and submits it. On average, we're seeing about 2% conversion rate on these. So that's very, very good. 2% of the people coming to your website fill out a form, that's amazing. Mobile analytics, mobile tends to perform even better. So we see up, averaging on these, um, we're seeing up like two and a half, almost 3%. And then the last piece that I wanna talk about with the website is smart client. Um, one thing that we hear from clients all the time is, I want access to my information. They want to have access to their analytics account, they wanna have access to their AdWords account, but it's complex and it's really, really hard to get in there and figure out what you're supposed to look at. So we developed Smart Client, and this is built into the back end of all of our websites. And it gives you the basic information. And we can customize it, but it's going to give you your website analytics, what people are doing while they're on your website. 
and your top content. What are people looking at while they're on the website? And this, for this dealer, most of what people are looking at is searching new. But then we look at where are they leaving your website? And they're not leaving from new, they're leaving from used. So people are coming in looking at new, also looking at used before they move on. So gives you a good idea of what people are interested in on your website. We also tell you what they looked at while they were there. So for new, in this case, it, the F-150 by far, this is up in Calgary and everybody drives a truck. Um, but then we look over at used too. So we can see what people are looking for. So is your inventory sufficient? Do you have what you need on the lot, especially for used, if you have a lot of people looking, in this case, for the Super Duty uh, F-350? That's pretty popular in a used, more popular than it is in a new, because it's really expensive. So maybe you want to start a buyback program and get hold of your, your customers who purchased that 350 three years ago. See if they're ready to trade it in and get the next newer model and start building your inventory for used on your lot. So this gives you a really good basis for building your marketing strategies. We also let you know what's going on with your SEO performance. So this for us is critical. Um, everybody talks about Google. Google is the biggest search engine, we already know that. But Bing and Yahoo perform, outperform Google on a conversion rate in most cases. So here we can see that we've got about 20% of our traffic coming from Bing and Yahoo. Google is you know, delivering the bulk as we expected. But when they come from Bing and Yahoo, they're way more likely to convert. They're, it's a different demographic. We know that the Bing demographic is a little bit older. We know that, <clears throat> excuse me, they probably have a little less education, but they're more financially stable because of their age. So we've got that kind of a different demo there in Bing, and they are more willing to fill out a form and send in their information. So this helps us in planning budget uh, constraints. Where should we be putting our money? Should we put, be putting it all in Google? Should we be pull, pulling it across Bing? So when your performance manager sits down with you on a monthly basis and goes over how your accounts are doing, these are the kinds of things that we look at from here to see what sort of strategies we should employ. And then for those of us who are a little bit more nerdy and like all the numbers, all the numbers are available. So there's complete transparency. These are numbers on your paid AdWords accounts. We're letting you know how, there's a lot more to it than just this. I just chose a few of the um, metrics to share with you. But we let you know how everything is doing over time so that you can go in, set the dates, come in anytime you like to take a look at what's going on with your accounts and hold your advertising agency accountable. So that's what I have to share today. Um, we are here out at booth 402, um, not in the, in the exhibit hall area, but out in the foyer area. I'd love to answer questions for anybody who's interested today. Brian's here with me, um, and we'll be here right through Friday. Um, so if anybody has questions, if anybody have questions now, I'd be more than happy to field any. Why, thank you very much. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you, Nan. Very well done.